Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to another edition of Tool Tech Tuesday. Well, as you can see, uh, back in the driveway unloading, uh, we have picked up a bandsaw for the shop. What I have done is I've traded my Evolution S380 uh, with stand uh, for this Carolina HV20. Um, I'm not sure of the age yet. I have not been able to do a whole bunch of research on it, but it is an American made pro product, which I like. Um, and we do have a serial number right here. Uh, I'm gonna call them tomorrow uh, by the time I got a chance to get everything unloaded and play with a little bit. Um, they were closed, they closed at 4.30 for the day. This company is still in business. They still do manufacture saws and presses and some other things. Uh, I'll put their link in the description if you guys wanna check out their website. Uh, but it has all their information on it uh, right here, uh, right here. And I think that was it. But anyway, this is the uh, HV20 uh, from Carolina Industrial Equipment. So, not sure the size. I do know that this is a 10 tooth per inch blade because I did check that. And then we have all the cutting criteria over on this side uh, for what blade to use depending upon what materials you're cutting. Um, it is a wet bed saw, uh, probably not going to use it as such. Um, I'm going to have to check with them and get a blade that will, uh, basically just an air cool blade versus a wet bed or a, a wet blade. Uh, what I may do is take this petcock right here or grab something different. Uh, we have an Ellis at work that has kind of the same setup and then hook this line up to air. And then instead of having a solution or your, your cutting lubricant dripping down over the blade, uh, just have air going down over the blade right here to uh, cool it off. Uh, it is a hydraulic uh, lower or lift or basically lower. You got your speed adjustment right here on this petcock. It doesn't work just too bad. Um, but it is this hydraulic cylinder has been used several times. You see it's just a little bit wet on top I have made probably three cuts with it. I'm trying to get it set up and square um, You can set this saw So it's to cut angles back here you loosen both of these and then you can turn your table or turn your back support uh, depending upon what angle you want to cut uh, it is missing unless it's on top right there uh, there's nothing to tell me what degree it is, so I would have to guess or have an angle finder to be able to decide what degree I'm cutting. Uh, for the most part, I just wanted this for cutting some straight material. Um, yeah, I just I wanted to get away from throwing chips all over the shop and having to clean those up all the time. But right over here on the table, on the fab table, we do have some cuts. Um, it is not cutting. This is after the first cut. You can see that that is way, way off. Yes. I think somebody wants outside. Hold on just a minute. You know you're interrupting, don't you? Do you have to go out? Hey, sit. Sit. You wanna go outside? All right, sorry for the interruption. So let's get back to it. Um, so anyway, you can see this is way off. I mean, that's that's a pretty good, uh, I mean, you can see that pretty good with the naked eye on how off that cut is. Uh, this is 3 16 two by two. Um, yeah, so that's the first cut, made a little bit of adjustment. Um, this is the second cut. You can see one side is pretty square, other side dives down just a little bit uh, on both sides. We've got third cut right here. Not just too bad. I did cut that flat like that instead of upright. Uh, I'm going to put that back in there and do an upright cut and see how it does. Um, but that's pretty, that's cut pretty square as far as uh, that portion. Pretty good and even all the way across there. It's not just too bad. That's not too bad. That's not too bad there. 
three eighths I have not cut yet there. Uh, this is the drop from this one. You see that side there was cut with the uh, cold saw. And this side was cut with the band saw. Like so, that one goes there. Like I said, this one off, this one, it dives down. So I think I'm gonna take the tubing back over there and do another cut with it and uh, we'll see how it goes. So the way this one works here is you got your on off switch right there and then it does have a stop right here. So this comes down, hits the frame right here and then this little tab right here, it presses down on that and stops it. And then you got a catch right here with three or four different positions as far as your stop. So we can just put it there or tied up against. Uh, we're gonna see what happens here. One thing I did do on the first cut, I had this guide clear in. I uh, forgot to actually put it in and that was on this piece here. So uh, we moved the guide in closer to your material you're cutting uh, and it keeps that blade in the position that it's supposed to be. One thing I did notice, this blade does have a kink in it, so I'm probably gonna wanna order a new blade and probably, uh, just to keep it on hand, have a belt as well. So as you can tell, that takes quite a bit longer than with the cold saw. I could have probably cut that piece three times um, with the cold saw, but slow and steady wins the race, I guess. All right, just pulled that out of the saw and did a heck of a lot better job this time. Get things lined up to where it's supposed to be here. That's the top. So this was the first cut, not so square. This is the second cut. That actually moving that guide up there closer helped out quite a bit. That edge is not quite cleaned off. There's just a small little burr right there. Do some spinning here. So that's pretty darn good right there. Not just too bad. That side's pretty square, pretty straight too. And so is that side. And it's pretty square that way as well. So. Anyway, we're getting it dialed in just ever so slightly. Um, never really had to mess with a bandsaw like this, getting everything dialed in just right. But uh, I'm learning as I go. I want to try and go online, do some research on this Carolina saw tonight, and uh, see if I can find a manual or something like that uh, to go along with it. Um, other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. My intention or my plan is to have it set right there and then come out this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll it over there and we'll see how it looks. Um, I don't think it's really gonna work the way that I want it to uh, because of how far it sits out this way uh, from its platform. But I'm gonna roll it over there and see what it looks like. All right, so there it is sitting in place. Um, not too bad, we still got room to walk through here, um, but it is, it's sticking out from the wall quite a bit. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna like that. I mean, we've got plenty of room from the door. Uh, the plan was to have this whole wall be like a saw cutting station um, and then have some off of this bed right here come out to the garage door actually, just about right in there someplace and with some roller conveyor. And that way I'd have a place to lay my material on right here 
Um, so we'll see how it's going to work. I may even take the uh, 355 over there and set it here uh, connected to the roller conveyor on this side. And I'll have the bandsaw over there and I'll have the cold saw right here um, butting up to, with the roller conveyor butting up uh, to the table on that side. Whatever stand that I may build or they may come out with, um, that might be an option to take the uh, 355 and set it on this side uh, of the roller conveyor and then have this side be bandsaw. So kind of an option. Um, that might be kind of a cool setup uh, to have them both right there and then all cutting chips and everything will be confined uh, to that area over there. So or another option is to put it back there in the corner uh, but since the material comes out that side if you put it back here then you're limited on length you can cut that way because of going into the wall so yeah i don't know anyway this is a carolina hv20 um not sure on manufacturer date uh, I'm going to say it's probably an older machine, but I mean, it's in relatively good condition. Um, we'll find out some more information tomorrow, and then I'll let you guys know uh, as soon as I know some more information. Um, I'll either post it to my TikTok. Uh, all my links are in the description for all my social media platforms. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll do another video on this. I may... Uh, add something or i may do another video when i build that conveyor set up or for the, with the roller conveyor um or gravity roller conveyor or whatever it's called yeah i'm, I'm kind of thinking i might like that even though that sticks out a little bit further i still got plenty of room to walk in between that and my fab table so anyway um yeah that's pretty much all i have uh just was excited to go pick this up off marketplace uh did a trade like i said once again for the 380 in the stand uh for that so uh, both of us, I think, got what we wanted, and then we both come out on top as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I guess with that being said, that's pretty much all I have. If you don't mind, hit that like button, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not already done so, and we'll see you guys in the next one.